Welcome to A Magical Life, Health, Wealth and Weight Loss. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, Lead Practitioner at Holistic Natural Health Australia and number one best-selling author. In this podcast, I aim to give you practical tips on how to accelerate and sustain your health, increase your financial, spiritual and emotional wealth and to look at something that haunts many of us needlessly, weight loss. In some episodes, I'll have guests available to give you even more tips, but in others, the floor is yours. Drop us a line at A Magical Life Podcast on Facebook and let me know what you would like to know more about. Now, sit back and enjoy, because it is time for you to create and truly discover a magical life. Welcome back to A Magical Life. I'm your host, Magic Barclay. Welcome to episode 41, where we're talking about caring. And some wonderful people are joining me. They are Liam and Amanda McFadden. They're partners in all senses of the word and proud parents to Alice, who is seven. They are the co-founders of Clan, who they will tell us all about. Liam has an extensive background in business management and consulting, and Amanda's background is in social work and early childhood. In 2017, they moved to Geelong in Victoria, Australia, and made a life-changing decision to start a social enterprise to achieve a purpose that they felt strongly about. Welcome, guys. Thank you, Magic. Hi, Magic. So, first of all, Tell us a little bit about yourselves. That's a great intro. <laughs> yeah. Why why did you start Clan and tell us what Clan is? Well, Clan is we really started Clan with our 7-year-old Alice. We were getting care for her, but really like the informal care. And Friends, neighbors, um, family members um, helping us uh, when we needed it. It was we, we particularly liked it because it was a really flexible, we could choose who looked after her, we didn't have to enter into any contracts. Uh, and so we we where we were living at the time, we had to travel a long way to get informal care for her. So and we looked into it and found that there was something, what is it, Liam? Something like a million plus. Oh, a million, we found that there was a million children. Uh, in Australia that still rely on informal care. Uh, and just to be clear for the listeners, what we mean by informal care, it's um, childcare, it can be elderly care, it can be disability care, that's provided by uh, people's or families, friends, neighbours, uh, work colleagues and, and others who just uh, do, it, do it for cash. And, you know, there can be good and bad examples of that. Uh, one of our neighbours was a retired school teacher, so we were very happy with her looking after mm. Alice because um, uh, she got a lot of good learning experience out of it. What we felt was that, uh, you know, for us, the formal care system didn't work so well um, because of distance, accessibility and a lack of flexibility. And uh, realising that there were so many other families out there in a similar predicament as ourselves, I think Amanda said to me one day, why, why can't uh, mm. uh, organising care be as convenient as uh, booking something on Airbnb, which uh, Amanda was using at the time at to the manage the property? I had, had, I was using Airbnb. And so that's really where the, the thought started and it, it sort of progressed from there. We, sh- we should be able to um, choose who the person is that looks after our child. We need to feel that they're a safe person, so we need to know that. Uh, they need to be vetted. Um, they, they need to... Um, uh, have some basic uh, knowledge and experience of what they're doing. Uh, and really realising that there was a million children in informal care, relying on informal care, that means that there's probably you know, three or 400,000 people out there that are providing this uh, mm. care. The listeners may remember me talking about my own kids. I'm a carer of my own two children um, who both have ASD. And something I found when they were younger was we were getting council respite care. So we were having trained carers come into the home, help out with a few things. But some of the rules around that was, you know, you can't use respite to go to work. Mm, So how are you supposed to get ahead when the carer's pension isn't a lot of money? Um, And how are you supposed to get above the poverty line when you have two special needs kids? 
if you can't use respite care to go to work. So, you know, this whole idea is absolutely fantastic because it frees carers up mm. to get out. And when you're caring for someone with a disability and, you know, I'm sure it's the same with someone with who's aged or, or a child without a disability, sometimes you just need to get out and be you and that's what you need care for. And if that means going to work for three hours, then so be it. Yeah. It really gives these people that are doing it anyway the opportunity to jump on the platform and be supported by CLAN to make a mini business at home and, and look after other people yeah. in their community. So somebody that is a stay-at-home carer with capacity um, uh, to do other things can apply to get on the platform and use their skills and experience. We upskill them. Uh, we provide them with uh, a very comprehensive induction program, which uh, uh, covers making sure that they have all the necessary safety uh, requirements, like police checks, working with children checks, uh, first aid, which we arrange for people, and uh, also to get insured. Uh, they uh, also learn a little bit about setting up and managing a small business as opposed to being an employee, which is a great skill to have no matter what. Uh, and they also learn um, a lot about the industry. So whether it's childcare, elderly care, disability care, they, they get upskilled in that. Uh, and then, you know, they, what that means is that they're then uh, equipped and can be confident of providing a much higher standard of care, um, not only for the people that care for themselves, but also for other people's uh, family members. Uh, and they can get paid for that. Uh, and we also felt it was important uh, for communities that, they not be told what hours to work. They, they mm -hmm. shouldn't be told what to charge. Uh, that needs to be up to them. Uh, they can have a little business. They can um, charge uh, a rate that's um, uh, suitable for their community. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they want to look after other family members or friends, uh, for example, uh, they can do so by applying a discount to the rate they charge. That's entirely up to them. Uh, so giving people that freedom and as you say what, what it can do magic and we've had conversations with a few people in the past uh, that yes they might start off in a community and they might um, uh, not charge an awful lot to the first group of mums that they might yeah. seek to help yeah. to give them the opportunity to get back out into the market to, to train and to mm. become employed themselves and as they begin to earn they can begin to afford to pay a little bit more uh, to the carers that make all that possible for them. That's fantastic. Now, we are health, wealth and weight loss focused here. So I asked the same three questions to all of my guests. And some of the answers that uh, I get are very interesting and I can't wait to hear yours. Mm. So what can your expertise do to accelerate health, be it emotional, spiritual or physical? Well, our social Enterprise was established with the purpose of supporting the millions of Australian families left behind by regulated care services and still reliant on uh, informal care, um, being friends, extended family, um, neighbours and others to provide care for children, elderly and those with a disability. Um, so, I, so I guess we support them by providing pathways to employment that informal family carers can access. Um you know, create a new family care service and that helps reduce the risk of uh, for families needing informal care and it releases other carers uh, to become trained and employed themselves. And, you know, uh, what that means is that people need to feel valued by their community. Uh, we speak to a lot of people, like uh, I think I remember speaking to one uh, Indian family um, yeah. who both uh, the parents had to work to make ends meet and the only way they could do that uh, was to fly one of their parents over from India um, uh, mm -hmm. to to literally uh, stay in the apartment mm -hmm. and look after the children while they worked. Now that that poor parent uh, had no English. Um, yeah. They they were very isolated, uh, yeah. and that's all they, all they did was stay in an apartment all day looking after uh, the kids while the parents worked. So I think that's a bit bit unfortunate. It's not a great uh, feeling for that for that person that feels isolated, because mm. uh, people need to feel valued for their community. It's a feeling that's often denied, I think, to stay at home carers. Yeah. Uh, so what we do is we kind of try and reach out to them to say, "Hey, we recognise your skills, we recognise your experience, and how would you like to have an opportunity to be upskilled? Yeah. Uh, how would you like to be resourced and supported to care for others in your community as well?" And as, as well as getting out there and meeting other people and, and being valued, you can also earn an income. Yeah. Um, and if they actually like if they actually like that, 
um, you know, we can also offer pathways to higher qualifications uh, for those that want to make a career of caring. And in our view, the well-being aspects of this shouldn't be underestimated. Uh, what do you think, Amanda? Well, you know, you've spoken oh. to a lot of people that, yeah, yeah that, that they just, yeah. Uh, what about um, the girl in Sydney we spoke to, uh, who yeah. was a, a social worker? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and she couldn't she couldn't go back to work. She couldn't go be, back to work yeah. because she was supporting her mother in law. Yeah. And, um, and and so so she was really committed to, to to do that and wasn't able to get back to work as a social worker at all. But if she and she was very interested in this because then she could actually support her mother in law and others in the community. And, and the strange thing was that you know her she had the capacity to work, but what she couldn't commit to was regular hours. That was her only only handicap that she needed to be on call for where her mother-in-law needed her, uh, and so couldn't commit to regular hours, and so just got knocked back from from employment um, all over the place. Mm. But she had the capacity and the skills and the experience to work. So we. Can... I found that definitely when my kids were younger, um, yeah. you know, like you send them off to school, something would go wrong. You can't expect a regular employer to understand that I have to go at a moment's notice and yeah. I might not be back for a week but yeah. this is just the way it is because my family have to come first yeah and the other thing around health with uh, carers with people with disabilities and as I said you know this is my experience listeners I'm sure this transfers across to people with um, you know elderly patients that they're caring for or small children but your health takes a dive as a carer unless you have some support. Yes. And this is where having, you know, some some carers come in, even just to give you an hour to go for a walk yes. or go and get your hair done or your nails or just go and have a cup of coffee or sit in the park or whatever, you can be so exhausted as a family carer that you really do need that sense of community. And certainly on this podcast we talk a lot about community and on our Facebook pages, we encourage that sense of community. And that's often what carers, especially family carers, are lacking, is that community, uh, you know, that that feeling of support. And so the health really does decline. Yes. Yeah. And in our, in our view, Amanda and I have always philosophically felt it was important. It does take a village. Yeah. That the, the problems that you've just described, I don't believe or we don't believe can be solved by big business or by government. No. It's up to communities to support each other. Support each other. Take- totally agree with you there. It does take a village and community is so important. So I'm just so glad we're talking about this today and that the listeners have an opportunity to learn more about what's out there. As you said, big business and government just can't provide the service that is needed to our community. No, they lack the empathy at that local grassroots level. Now, we always talk here about wealth. Wealth could be personal, financial or emotional. So what are your top three tips to creating wealth and how can Clan help? <laughs> well, mm, well, we, well, obviously visiting our platform, Induction Page, presents three entry-level opportunities to anyone listening um, and they can then take their first step on a supported pathway to employment. Um, and compared to new start and a carer's allowance, um, a, d- a dedicated family carer can earn up to $900 a week. That's even if they work part time, they will gain skills, experience, and an income supplement. And in the end, they'll be more employable than before. So, um, to give listeners an idea, carer's allowance and payment put together are about $600 a week, but you have no support, you have no skills, you are not developing yourself at all, you are just taking the pension to care for those that you care for. That's right. There's, wow. there's no up-levelling, no upskilling, no. and $600 a week keeps you below the poverty line. Right. Yep. Yes, yep. You, you need you need a bit more. Yep. Um, uh, but it's the, it's the opportunity of earning it as well. It's the opportunity of actually providing value to other people in your community and, and receiving mm. uh, some money. But even with the carer's allowance, uh, as we understand it, there is a capacity to earn some uh, money before there's an impact on that carer's allowance. Um, so Yes, can... there is. I think you can work 
now up to 20 hours a week. Hours a week but yeah. as I said, to do that, you can't use your respite care. So there comes the catch. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we felt that working um, uh, even part-time, uh, they can still have the opportunity to, to earn some money. Uh, if they do some childcare, they can be working from home, which means they can still be in their own home environment. They can still be providing the care yeah. to the family member that they need to care for um, and still have uh, others in the home that they can care for as well. There's opportunities to go out and work in the homes of others, the homes of families um, for elderly care and disability care uh, interested people. Money aside, they'll be part of a new clan of carers connected with each other, offering support and friendships. So all of our clan carers are invited to um, join our clan Facebook group uh, where they can safely and securely communicate with one another, share information, share support mm. uh, and, yeah. and be on call to help each other. So, yeah. for example, if there is a carer um, that's, that, that has yeah. booked you know, to yeah. care for somebody, and something happens to their family and they can't do it, they can yeah. ask another carer yeah. uh, to step in as well. And because they're a clan carer, they're all trained to the same standard, vetted to the same um, level of safety, um, they can do things like that. That but, sounds great. And definitely building that emotional welfare, knowing that the stress is taken out of finding a carer, that's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Thank you. A big part of what we were setting out to do is to give that element of choice. And uh, we keep harking back to that uh, Airbnb uh, yeah. type of example. Yeah. We wanted families to be able to look at a choice of carers in their community. We wanted them to see the profile of the carer. And if the carer is offering care from their own home environment, we wanted to see a profile of that care environment as well. Uh, so a family can then make the, choice. make the choice to say, I really like this, the, I'll make this person. With them. So I'll make contact with them mm. and then they can share information. Transparency is very, very important, we, we believe. Uh, so the families uh, are, are private. The carers can't um, look at different families and choose which family they want to work with. But families have the opportunity of deciding which carers they want to work with. And only when they commit to booking are full details shared. But it's also important that with carers, um, often there can be complications with the person being cared for. So the, the family set up a profile as well with all necessary documents on the platform to say, um, for example, my child has asthma, so this is their asthma management plan. So that when they do connect with a carer, all that information on the person being cared for is readily available mm. to the carer. Yeah. And it's safe and it's secure. Uh, and it can be shared uh, very, very quickly. Uh, so that, that level of transparency and that level of sharing, I think, is, is, um, is quite important. Great. Now, we also talk weight loss here. And the reason I started going down this weight loss rabbit hole years ago was as a carer myself, I became super morbidly obese. And when I was part of Autism Vic and Carers Vic, what I noticed was I wasn't the only one. At least 90% of family-based carers have weight issues. Mm. So my question to you is, if you've ever battled your weight, what was the trigger to lose it? What can you offer listeners to reduce their stress, which we know is a key issue in weight issues. Now, Liam, before you answer this, or Amanda, when I read your notes here, I had a giggle. I have to let the listeners know that this is an Australian-based podcast and what you're about to hear, you may not understand, mm. but Google it, YouTube it, because it's hilarious and it just brought so many memories back to me. So over to you guys. <laughs> okay, well, Liam lives in a good paddock, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've roamed fertile paddocks myself, uh, I have to say, magic. But, uh, Amanda doesn't struggle with it at all. She's um, uh, very, very active. It's not, and it, yeah. not, uh, not active in the sense of going to gyms or going to um, uh, doing that. It's just literally moving. It's moving around the house. It's uh, doing some gardening. It's um, uh, just being active around the property. Um, so there's no gyms involved. There's no special diets involved. There's just activity involved. Which carers are active? Well, that's, yeah. you know, part, part of what we're trying to do is to, is to encourage this activity. Um, so we did, we, we have become a licensee of Life Be In It. Yeah. Um, so last so year. Some of your listeners aren't remember, I Life Be In It. Norm. Yeah, yeah I, I relate very well to Norm. Um, 
<clears throat> so that's uh, he's a um, anti-hero of mine. Um, but we they're based uh, in Geelong, like we are, and we do share values, and we call our program Life Being at Family Care. Yeah. And uh, their mission is summarised in two phrases. simple phrases. Um, be more, more active and live more of your life. And so most people remember life being for the first one, uh, be more active, because that's the one that featured Norm, um, as I said, who I relate to. Uh, and so we do encourage family carers to focus very much in offering learning programmes using healthy, active play, yeah. whether that's for young children or older children or um, even those with a disability or those who are elderly, there's mm. always ways to encourage um, uh, learning and healthy activity. activity. Mm. And it's that healthy activity that's really quite important, whether it's doing the gardening, whether it's uh, going for a walk, mm. uh, it's, it's simple things. Uh, could you live with children in care uh, to reduce chronic preventable disease, such as obesity? Yeah, it starts young. So if you, mm. if you can really get to... Um, work with children in their early years and encourage this activity, encourage the healthy active play and learning through healthy active play, uh, that can do a lot um, to begin to reduce that risk of chronic preventable disease. But the other part of what uh, Life Being It is about is live more of your life. And not, not too many people remember that part of it. Uh, they're very passionate about improving not just the health, but also the wealth and the well-being mm. of disadvantaged Australian families. And that's why we're a good fit um, that in their view, creating an increasing household income provides a lot more opportunities uh, for families to address uh, issues around health and uh, wealth and well-being. Uh, so creating employment pathways is something that they were very passionate about. And uh, mm. um, we, we like their philosophy as well. So yeah. we've incorporated uh, that those missions into what we do uh, to try and encourage Australian families to be more active and also to give them the opportunity of living more of their lives. That is fantastic. Thank you. And yes, obesity is only one side of weight issues. A lot of carers can actually go the other way. They can become so distraught and stressed that they lose too much weight. Mm. Uh, their body becomes very catabolic, attacking itself. And then they end up needing a carer. So definitely, you know, being more active, yes, and living more of your life, definitely. This is quite close to my heart, as I said. And I really want to get some more information about Clan Out to our listener base here. So where can they find you on social media? Okay. Um, the platform is the best place to start. So I'd probably recommend uh, to listeners that they visit um, our site, which is clan.com.au. C-L-A-N-N.com.au. And, you know, have a look around. Um, we recommend um, early learning resources for our carers to use mm. um, when they're caring for kids. As I mentioned, that uh, this, this learning is, is very, very important. Um, and we've given them a discounted price to access these, um, these resources. They're very good. Uh, we've used ourselves with our own daughter over um, the lockdown period. Yeah. We've got a 50% discount um, uh, off uh, the cost of using these resources uh, for our carers. And we're actually offering that to families as well. Mm. Uh, so any of your listeners that want to visit our platform, um, they'll find that they can access uh, some very good material or early learning resources for a 50% off uh, price. So it's there now for families. It's on the resources page on our platform. We would love to get some support. We're new, Magic, so we're just kind of yeah. starting out ourselves. We've gone public with this since July. We're really encouraging people to just have a look at the platform, see if they like it. And happy for them to Zoom too. Yeah, know, happy, to, to happy to get Zoom. get in touch with me or Liam or... Yeah, we're also on um, Facebook. So on, on Facebook, you can find us by uh, searching for Clan Australia, um, all one word, C-L-A-N-N, -N, Australia. Um, and you'll find us on Facebook. It's a good it's a good source of information and updates as, as we release new things and share information and the experiences of some of our carers and you can meet some of them there. Um, on LinkedIn, um, we're company number 13461031. That's 13461031. Uh, so you can find us on, on LinkedIn, again, just Clan Australia. 
Uh, Instagram is the same, instagram.com forward slash clan Australia and twitter.com forward slash clan Australia. Um, so that's, there, that's a few things, that's a few things uh, to do. Content. Yeah, the platform is the primary one. So for all the listeners out there that may be in need of supplementing their income or building their community, being really true to themselves, this is something that is fantastic for you, for all the carers out there to build your health, to build your wealth, your spirituality, be connected to community and have that support. Again, this is absolutely brilliant for you. And from a carer, all I can say, Liam and Amanda, is thank you so much for doing this. I wish you were around 20 years ago, but you're here now. Yeah, we're here now. And, and Magic, uh, it's an important point. Uh, so families um, that might benefit from life being at family care, coming into their homes and helping them, um, by setting up a profile on the platform, it lets carers or potential carers know um, that there are families interested in this particular service. And it'll encourage maybe one or more of those families to actually become carers themselves and help the others in their community. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Liam and Amanda, for joining us today on A Magical Life. Coming up in some episodes in the future, we have people talking about van life. Maybe being a carer would fit in with the nomadic van life as well. Uh, we have people coming on talking about functional health solutions, of which you can find more information at holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. And we have some amazing coaches sharing their expertise with us and a couple of spiritual guides. So looking forward to some more episodes coming up for now. Thank you, Liam and Amanda. And listeners, go forth and create your magical life. Thanks for listening today. Please subscribe to hear future episodes, leave a review and share this podcast. You can follow us on Facebook at A Magical Life Podcast or at Holistic Natural Health Australia. That's holistic with a W. You can find us on Instagram at Holistic Natural Health or at www.holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. That's where you'll access all sorts of articles, freebies and more.